I've been watching you, Dees. I've been watching you very closely. Yes, I know you, you see. I know all about you. I trust you now understand that you can never write of what you know. Can never reveal what you have seen. Open your camera now. You're real. <laughs> so are you. For now at least. This is your last chance, my would-be biographer. Open your camera or I'll do it. Well, don't fear for your life, Dees. I have no intention of killing you. After all, we are brothers in blood, are we not? This sad world would be a much sadder place without the likes of you. Besides, I have fed well tonight. Mm. So very well. But listen closely, my inquisitive friend, because I say this only once. Do not follow me anymore, or I will swallow you whole. That much, <laughs> I promise. <sighs> Stephen King's The Night Flyer. That's where it all started. Started with Stephen King and his stories. As you know, Stephen King is known for his imagination and his imaginative stories. And in this particular case, he's really done a great job. Now, a lot of his stories have managed to be converted to movies. And what you just saw was a scene from The Night Flyer, which is a 1997 movie, which I frankly had no clue even existed. And I ran across it when I happened to be kind of doing a bio on um, Stephen King and realized that he has other stuff, a lot of other stuff that's been converted into movies and stuff that is amazing. So that's what the subject of our review is tonight. So Stephen King, as you know, has been probably one of the most successful, successfully can, um, adapted authors and one of the, probably one of the most successful authors in North America. He, there's just a ton of different uh, shows like Carrie and um, Salem's Lot that comes to mind, um, The Shining. There's too many to mention. But there's a lot of them that, that fall kind of under the radar. And one of them is The Night Flyer. Now, The Night Flyer is. Uh, one of those movies that came out in the 90s and the thing about the 90s is even if your movie didn't do that great in the box office it certainly would do well in the video market in the VHS era and then later on in DVDs so that's um, probably where a lot of people were exposed to the Night Flyer was in DVD or 
VHS format. And this really is a really great movie. Now one of the things that works so well with this movie is the performances. Particularly the performance of Miguel Ferrer. Now, Miguel Ferrer has actually passed away, I think it was in 2017, and it, he's related to George Clooney, and you know, the world's going to be a little um, less uh, for his passing because the guy was a great um, actor in his own space. and. Where I remember him most from is uh, Robocop. That's where he really made an impression on me. But this movie really raised my respect for Miguel because he does such a great job. Now I'm, I'm reminded of a, a little bit of like um, Carl Kolschak from The Night Stalker in that he plays sort of like a, like a not so nice kind of jaded reporter but in this case he's a reporter for like a tabloid and he's just chasing stories and you know the story and the, and the headline are more important than anything else and that's the interesting thing about this he's kind of teamed up with what he calls the Jimmy Olsen sort of person who's like a new reporter and they they kind of have a you know a naive idea of what reporting's about and you know they're not comfortable with sort of bending the rules whereas you know Miguel's character is so used to bending the rules that you know the the branch is completely bent over if you know what I mean so he heads out on this story about a serial killer a serial killer that um, uses a plane to tra to go from place to place and leaves a trail of bodies. Now one of the things about Miguel's character is he's not a f above you know impersonating authorities to get information so in this particular case he imp impersonates like an FBI agent so he can talk to a police officer for example or he'll break into a crime scene investigation without any issues, kick down the door and, you know, and disturb all the evidence, but he wants to get some pictures, you know, or he'll doctor pictures. So that's the kind of guy he is. He's kind of a rough, you know, um, it's all about getting the, the story or a version of the story that'll sell. So he's not, you know, not, not really the nicest guy. And interestingly, there's these parts in this movie that leave you guessing as to, like, what's going on? And that's the beauty of this movie. There's a lot of implied violence, there's a lot of implied things, but nothing is made extremely clear. And that's what works so well. Really, a lot of this movie is open to interpretation. And as we find out, he's getting messages not to follow the night flyer. And, you know, this guy, this, this, you know, mysterious figure, serial killer, is, he's, he seems to have supernatural power and he seems to be connected to this Miguel, um, his character. Um, the D's character is actually his name in the story. So, yeah, so what makes it interesting is they team him up with this, you know, rookie, and they work together for a bit, but ultimately this D's guy decides he's going to do go, on, go it on his own and try and track down the Night Flyer. He's in for more than he can handle. So ultimately, it leads to him finding a plane, and I'm not going to give away too much more because I want you to 
to see the movie for yourself. And I want you to experience it for yourself. I don't want to spoil this for you because there's too much on the on YouTube that's just recapping and showing you everything you need to know about a movie and too much so that you'll basically go into the movie and know everything about it. And it, to me, that ruins the, the twists and the turns and the open-endedness of things. So I'm going to leave you with just this thought, and that is, was there really a night flyer? Or was it Dee's own mental sort of illusions? Is he deranged himself? Is this real? Or is it not? The Night Flyer. Watch it. See it for yourself. And you decide what you think of the ending. That's my review, or taste of this movie and I hope you enjoy it you can see my check out my community um, section of YouTube and I'll try and find a link for you for this movie and uh, I hope you're having a great evening I'm thinking for my um, for my channel I'm probably gonna end up doing a lot more of this sort of stuff because frankly I find it pretty easy to do um, I find like doing a computer video or whatever I've been doing in the past to be a little bit more challenging and you know I don't find that people really appreciate the you know I don't get the views or whatever and you know not that I'm in it for the views but you know also at the same time it's kind of nice to know people are watching it I don't monetize any of my stuff um, and you know I oftentimes use copyrighted material because hey I'm not worried about it because I'm not gonna get you know dinged for you know, I can't monetize this. I don't care. That's not what I'm, I'm about. I'm about giving you back to the community, giving you guys a chance to see some great entertainment and, you know, get, shining the spotlight on some, some movies, some talent out there that needs to uh, be uh, highlighted because I think there's some great movies out there and I see a lot of junk coming out these days high you know great you know great uh, uh, special effects you know CGI stuff but you know you take a movie like this it didn't have any CGI but it has atmosphere it has performances and it just works for me anyway so I hope you enjoy it and I hope you're having a good evening and I'll catch you in the next video <laughs>